Hello, it's Selling Guy 60 again. I've got a new little project for 2019. Just did our last video with Jacob and myself uh, doing a little lawnmower. That turned out to be nice. We'll have to see how that turns out for uh, this uh, summer for selling. But I found this yesterday. It's a lawnmower. Sit alongside the, in a pile of the garbage. And uh, I pulled the rope, and the, and it it pulled just fine. Everything it, it pulled, so it's the engine is moving. It's funny. It had tape. Here's some tape. It had tape all over, holding this. I think maybe it might have been holding it down so they could store it. it had tape there, but uh, it is a Troy built. Now that it shows five horse on there, it gets me to think that I'm trying to think when they went to the CC's sticker on top. I think it might have been 2001, two or three. I can't remember. I'm going to look it up and I'll let you know. But um, shows that this is probably a pre 2000, maybe one uh, lawnmower. So it's probably a good 18, 20 years old. I don't see any tags on it. Usually there would be a tag back here to tell you the model number and everything. So, uh, it's got some funny things on it here uh, that you don't always see. Got a hand throttle that works. Throttle works. Uh, it's got some kind of drive drive deal here. And this little thing on the side is, I think it sets your um, uh, pace. So you can set, you can turn this knob. You can turn this knob and it sets your. I think you pull it. Must be. Pull, yeah, I need two hands to do that. Pull it out and that mechanism is in here, which I want to look at. So let's uh, set this up and see what we can come up with. Well, it looks pretty empty. Let's see. Yeah, yeah look at that. That's no. They're in, they ran the gas out of it, so maybe that's a good thing. Let's see if we got any oil. That was oil on the dipstick. A little bit low. Let's smell it. Yeah, it smells like oil. Doesn't smell like there's gas in it. So that's that's a good thing. And we know the throttle the throttle works. Let's see here. Let's see if we can't get this uh, bar up here. And I set myself some tools and some starting fluid back here. Uh, let's see about setting this bar up. Let's see. Now there's a nut missing over here. And this big, uh, this type of nut here. Let's see if this will hold it in place. And it's kind of spinning. See if it can hold. See this thing here? You pull it out and turn it. So we'll have to see how that works up there. All right. So let's take the air cleaner off. Get you set up on that there. Let's go over here. Let's see about the air cleaner. Let's see what that looks like. You're seeing what I'm seeing for the first time. Sometimes it's good. Yep, that's the wrong one. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Ew! <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, turn you around. Look at that. See that good? Nice and grubby. Yeah, seen better days. Well, let's shoot some starting fluid in this thing. And uh, let's see if I can get you a better shot here. Shoot some starting fluid in it and see if it will fire. Alright. It's open. No primer, no primer bulb, so this must be self-primer. Okay. Alright, we'll see if it pops. Oh, the stop works good. Hey, it's 
got spark. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Started up and this thing fell over. Oh, Figure some way of climbing that thing. Stay. <laughs> well, let's take this front off. This thing here. And uh, see what we got. What we have. We don't got anything. My mother speaking to me up in heaven. God is not a word. All right. Okay. There's a screw here and a screw here. And let me tell you what. This is one heavy thing. <laughs> I picked this up to put it back in my truck. I was like, whoa, this thing is heavy. Ooh. Okay. There's, a, there's the mechanism. Let's try some stuff and see if it works here. We got my pliers. One that's broken here. So let's see. Let you I'll zoom that in for you so you can see what I'm. Okay, see what happens when I turn that little dial thing. dial on that T-handle looks like it moves it left or right. Which probably tightens up the belt a little bit more and maybe makes it go a little faster or slower. Okay. Well, this, something's broke on this cable, so I'm going to have to pull the cable up here. Where the heck it go? It was right here. Here it is. Pull this cable and see what happens. Ah. Okay. That works. Back this up a little bit, and let's check the let's check the wheels. Let's see if the wheels any gears left in the wheels. Sometimes the, there's no gears left. In the wheel. Look at that. This thing is all wore out. The teeth in here are all wore out. Let's see about this side. Oh, this side still works. There's one side that drives, so well, that's good. Well, shoot some WD-40. Make up a noise uh, <laughs> for the uh, the one guy watch here. Squirt some oil in there. Squirt some in here. It looks kind of rusty. And I'll take you up with me, and we'll go squirt some oil in this other one up here. I don't know if I'm going to put a See, here's that dial thing. I can do it with one hand. Let's see. What I did is you pull out. See, so you pull out and you turn this thing. And there's the thing is right there. So the top of the head is right there. Shoot some water. Shoot some in there. Then there's a cable. Here's the cable right here. See that? See that better of an angle. And then it hooks onto this lever here. So I might end up putting a, maybe some zip ties or something on that, but I'm going to spray some oil down that and let it sit for a while. Oh, that's my, that's my straw. This is an older can. Had this one for a while. The new one's coming. It's already attached. Alright, there we go. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Shoot some oil down there. Well, let me go see if I can find something about this. 
I'll get back with you. And I'll let that WD-40 sit up for a while. And uh, I'll be back. I want to go see if I can find some information about this thing and uh, see if we can find a, a model for it. It's got to be somewhere that it's got the throttle and then that uh, adjustable uh, speed for your walking pace and then that hand uh, thing that engages the front wheels. So let me go take a look and I'll come back. Alright, I'm back. Uh, I found out this is a model 34020. That's the model. I didn't find a year and I was trying to find a year the mower was made. I, I didn't find that. I'm looking at my monitor, is that really showing up good or is it just dark? I guess it's showing. Okay. Sometimes when I look at my uh, my little screen it doesn't it looks dark. It's because I have to change the angle of it. Well what really tells us the year is taking this off and looking at the, the, the mower itself. It, which is kind of funny. I have a Toro that I bought in 2013, brand new, but it has a 2010 or a, a, a 2012 motor on it. So the motor was built a year before the before um, Toro decided to to build their model. I have a Craftsman sitting out there, the one that Jacob and I were working on. That model, that the year of the lawnmower, because I went by the VIN number on the on the Craftsman mower. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was built in 2015, but the mower was <laughs> the mower was uh, the engine was built in, in 2012. So let's get this cover off and let's see if we can't find some numbers on the mower, which you know will put us in at least a couple years of when this was built. Looks like this was built in 97. There it is. So you can see what I'm seeing. Let's see if I can tip that a little bit. You can see what I'm seeing. Right there is the. I'm trying to move the camera. Is the model number. Model number is a 12F82, and it shows the type, and then it shows the code. Yeah, geez, that's not... Get this thing right. <laughs> there we go. And the code starts with 97, so that's usually when the year the year the the uh, engine was built. So this this here is probably a 97, 98. 99 Troy built. So that's a that's quite old. That's quite old. So uh, well, let's put some gas in it, and I'll pull it outside, uh, and we'll see if we uh, get started. <laughs> so you're falling apart again. Stupid thing keeps falling. And we'll put some gas in. We'll see if they'll start. Get that 
a few minutes to go down into the carburetor. Uh oh, <laughs> it's leaking already. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> oh, it's dripping out the back. Damn it. <laughs> Oh man, I tell you. Here we go. <laughs> so those things you find out when you don't know nothing about the mower. See it's dripping there. <laughs> there it goes dripping. Well maybe some of the gas is getting to the carburetor. <laughs> let's let's find out. We'll start it up. See if some of the gas is getting to the carburetor. All right. More. interesting it starts up and it goes right to high rev and I was adjusting this here okay well let's see what we got down here in the side huh, that's, a, that's strange let's see what I look well, there's the the butterfly That's working. Oh, it's something stuck here. Oh. Hmm. All right. Well, let's put this on the. I'm gonna just pause this for a second, get you set up, so you can get with me on this. I'm going to reset the bipod up here closer. So, hold on. Alright, I'm going to move this back a little bit because I'm going to spray some brake clean on here. Can't really tell. thing is pretty grubby. So, let's uh, spray some brake clean on here and see if we can clean up some of this surface. smell of brake clean in the morning. I should say after. Well, it runs. Leaks like a sieve, but it runs. Crap out of it. 
See here is the high speed screw. You just and look at this thing here is sticking, sticking, sticking open. So there's supposed to be a return spring pulling this back. So let's see if we can find out where the return spring is not. So that's what's making it stick wide open. That's what's doing it right there. So since I'm half blind, nice. Let's try this again. Let's see if it revs up all crazy again. I'll just back it up, start it up, and uh, show you what I did. I got started, and the one tire spins. <laughs> I grabbed the cable by hand when it was running and pulled it, and the one wheel spins. You know it'll drive on one wheel. It leaks gas. Carburetor's gonna have to be overhauled. It won't go down to idle. It's probably full of gunk and whatever. So we've got it going. And uh, so now we gotta see if this thing is worth even trying to get fifty dollars out of it. I I don't know. You know this. This wheel, the gear is shot, it only drives off one wheel. These back wheels, I can't, I can't uh, these back wheels, look at that thing. Things are just wore out. Let's see this one over here wore out. Oh yeah, I said this. The centers of them are just completely wore out. I don't know. We're going to have to think about this. This is one of those things where you, uh, we try to decide whether the thing is, hang on, it's uh, dripping gas. There we go. Uh, whether it's worth putting money into it or not. I'll have to think about that. See what the parts are on this. You know, sometimes the parts are worth, you know, I could, the mower seems to be good. Uh, let me run a compression check on this, and we'll uh, we'll see what we got. So uh, let me um, shut this off, and 
We'll come back and we'll run a compression check on it. Let's let's see what the condition of the engine is. All right, let's work on this then. Are we recording? Uh, it's there somewhere. There it is, recording. Okay. So let's just take this top off. We're still in. And uh, there we go. There we go. Not sure what size this is. Case open. So that's, let's see. Really? So it is. Hit me. I grabbed my metrics because I figured that would always fit. Figure everything's metric. Yeah, there we go. It fit. We're close to it, anyhow. So we got a good compression on this, which is pretty cool. Gas is still dripping out the other side here. We might have to get the needle nose out. I should have grabbed that one. I was at my toolbox grabbing this. I the rest of the gas off because the gas tank is on this. These three screws hold the gas tank on and this cover. know this by watching the other guys working these lawnmowers. This side, take the gas tank off. Let's see what I'm doing. Maybe. <laughs> there you go. Get my needle with those pliers. Take that gas line off. Try to get gas all over myself. Watching paint dry, watching gas run off of the thing. <laughs> All right, you guys, you guys got more to do with your time than sit there and watch gas drain. Okay. All right, 
I'll set this over here. Yeah, that little bolt is right back under here. That's where it was. So that's extra bolt I saw in a video. So now we need to take this over here, and then you can watch me. Whoa! Drop you on your head. Okay, let's move it up a little bit. Let's take, we've got two bolts in the back, here and here, and we'll take this bolt off for the oil, oil filler. And let's see if these are the same size as that. They are. These are the same size as that one bolt that was back here. Let's take this thing off. I just want to see what's underneath here. What I'm going to probably do is look at my, I've still got schematics of my Toro and the um, uh, Craftsman mower. And those are both Briggs and Stratton. they both pretty much the same, same type of square filter uh, uh, media. The square filter comes off. There we go. And those one big ones were these were 10 millimeter along with that and the one that I'm using right now is a 8 millimeter. So the 8 millimeter takes off the screws from the top turn this gas tank on and the 8 millimeter takes this off. falling into it. And take you around to the front. And you can watch us take the top off. Alright, pick you up. There's two bolts in the front here. I'm hoping you're not in the dark here. Two bolts right here in the front. These are both 10 millimeter also. Ooh, on there. On there. So I got this thing for free. So hey, anything I get out of this, the engine, the carburetor, the uh, coil, so the cables, you know. This thing might be worth 50 bucks, over $50 in parts. You know, carburetors could be $20, $25. I'm not sure what coils are, but I'm going to look this stuff up and let you know. Okay, this thing should come right up. There we go. All right. Not bad. Not bad. See worse. And one thing here I can always tell whether something's been outside or not. <laughs> they must have had this in their garage. Let me unhook you here. Without dropping you on your head. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, flywheel. Here we go. See this part here? It's shiny. See, it's all nice and shiny. If it sits outside, this thing gets rusty. And what it does is these are little magnets in here, and they go by. They go by this thing here. They energize right here off the coil, and it shoots spark through the. Uh, oops, hang on. Through the spark plug, boop, here, to the, uh, boop, there, here, right there, stick that on there. So if this thing was sitting outside, this would all be rusty, and it's not. So this thing must have, they must have had this in their garage all, all taped up. There's some of the tape left over. I had all kinds of tape I had to pull off this thing. It was all kind of uh, smushed together. That, that there, oops. Let me go back, back, back. All right, come on. First day with the new camera, Rick. This little clip right there goes through, goes through the, uh, right through here. This thing was laying forward over the top of the engine, and that pin was in there. So all I had to do is unfold it, because so, you can fold these up for winter storage. 
So, considering this wheel stopped pulling and this mower won't idle, I would say they probably just ran it out of gas or whatever, or maybe they just ran out of gas and got a new one the following year, and it sat back in the garage, and they finally got rid of it. So, all right, let's go see how much these little coils are, and how much the carburetors are, and uh, just price up this stuff and see if it's uh, worth keeping. All right, I'll get back with you as soon as I figure it out. All right, bye. All right, I wanted to show you the numbers that we went across. I cleaned them up a little bit. It's the model number of the engine. It's this and the type. That's all one piece. And then here's the, the code, uh, the manufacturing date. So I looked up some information online here. Let's get this thing snapped in place. Up. All right. So I came up with the model number, the 34, 34020. That's the model number of the lawnmower. That's the, uh, the, the Troy built number of the lawnmower. It's a five horse Briggs and Stratton. Here's that number that I just showed you uh, the uh, 12F802 uh, and then the 117301. When you go to look up parts for this motor, you have to look up this suffix and this to get the right carburetor uh, number and everything. And then we went to the manufacturing date, which was the next one over the farthest to the right. And it breaks down to the uh, 97 was the year that that motor was built. It was built the second month. So that been February and it was built on the 25th day. And then the plant is 56. Uh, they started doing, putting these, Briggs and Stratton started putting these numbers corresponding to the year and everything in 1965. So if you have a pre-1965 Briggs and Stratton, you will not have this number on it. I don't know if you'll have this number, but I'm sure you'll have something here to uh, help you find parts if you have something that's before 1965. I looked up the carburetor numbers according to, of course, this number, and that's the uh, 79, 98, 71. The armature is a 590455, and then the fuel tank is a 699374. Well, if I went to online, they wanted to sell me the parts. The their price was 55 for the carburetor, 58 for the armature, and 50 for the fuel tank. Well, I went to Amazon and eBay, which are pretty much pretty close to each other. It was about $11 for the carburetor, brand new carburetor, using this number. Uh, it was $12 for the armature magneto, which I think, <laughs> if I looked it up correctly, this probably fits on my 2013 and that 2015 uh, Briggs and Stratton that I engines that I have out in the shed that are running. So this coil goes for many many years uh, the fuel tank uh, you can buy a new one for like thirty six dollars you can buy a used one for maybe about twenty dollars uh, you know that's up to you uh, if you're gonna keep it I would probably spend a little bit more money and buy the new the uh, new one so on this one here, I think what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, save it for parts. It's strange. This motor runs, and uh, it wouldn't idle, but if you kept the RPMs up, it would run. So all I would have to ever do is fix that little, fix that little cable that's broke off here. That little cable. It's not broken. There's a little, there's a little tab right there with a hole in it. I think if I probably just took a, a, a wired a piece of wire and wired that up to this lever, the lever here, if I just wired it up to that lever, I could just push it forward and at least the one wheel would pull. I think on these things here, this is where those they keep falling down. I think if I just put a nut on there, which I might might do, put a nut on that, this lawnmower is actually working. It's driving off this one 
left front wheel. The other wheels are all wobbly, but um, this mower is actually uh, still working, has good compression. Uh, other than the deck and the wheels being all wore out, uh, it's still functional. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty that's pretty amazing for a 97 lawnmower. Uh, so we're going to uh, I'm going to put this all that together. I'm going to probably spray this flywheel. You remember I was telling you about where the, you can tell it sits outside. This gets all rusty. I think what I'm going to do with this flywheel before I put the cover and everything back back on this is spray this down with WD-40. Spray this all down with WD-40. Spray the coil. Spray all this stuff down with WD-40. And then I'll probably put it underneath my uh, stairway on my back porch and put a tarp over it. So if I could find a, another deck, the deck uh, here, if I could find another deck for this, um, we could uh, make one good lawnmower. So I could maybe find one that's got a blown up engine and got good drive wheels and everything. I think I might be able to make it work. So uh, that's where I'm in that and that's the end of this video. So uh, it starts, it runs, but uh, we're going to save it for parts. Alright, this is Selling Guy. It's a nice day today. Oh, look at that. Nice. It's all rainy yesterday. It's, uh, spring is here, and uh, the clocks are. We gotta set the clock. Yeah, I gotta set my clocks ahead an hour <laughs> today. It's Sunday, and we're springing ahead. So uh, we'll catch you later, and uh, God bless you. All right, I got an endoscope from uh, Amazon, and I'm trying it out this engine. There's the engine where the spark plug goes into and we're gonna go in and see what we can see. Let's see. That's the top of the piston. Let me turn it over. Piston's coming up. Whoop, sorry. Piston's coming up. <laughs> Gosh. There's top dead center. And yeah, pretty lot of crust on top of that piston. Not too bad. Piston's going down. Let's see if we can see the valves. There's the valve, one of the valves there. Doesn't look too bad. That upper valve, that would be your exhaust valve. And then let's look down here. And there, I can adjust the light on this thing. Let's see. Yep, too bright. There we go. That is your intake valve. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, you gotta remember it's a engine crusty but, uh, yeah that's pretty cool I just got this a little while ago and I'll look up the uh, number for you uh, let's see if I can get out of this here and I wanted to show you that uh, I'll put uh, links on the page this is the uh, Impression tester I used. I can't remember where I got it from whether I bought it from Amazon or I got it from uh, Harbor Freight. I'll look that up for you. So I'll look up this number for you and I'll look up this little endoscope that really works uh, It's a pretty cool little deal. I just hook it to my camera. It's a little Wi-Fi little Wi-Fi deal here <laughs> So alrighty Now I can end this one <laughs> Just wanted to add this to my add a little add-on for this uh, my new little toy to check out the inside of the engines without having to pull the head off it. All right, cool.